Harper Stewart does not deserve nice things and should never know peace if you ask me. That's the intro. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to Erica Vane TV, the main channel for your good sis. You love to talk TV with breaking down the latest with the best man final chapters. In this video, we are going to be talking about chapter number seven, the eve before the end. And Harper Store has me hot. But before I get into this, let me also tell you about Erica Vane TV too, on my second channel that you should be subscribed to. Link in the description box down below so that you can get additional content, baby, because we come in with more content. It's never enough, right? So we got a little bit more. Same dope style of content, a little bit more informal conversations, and I'm very, very excited about it. So be sure to subscribe as I will be having other conversations there as well. I will be doing um, specific character conversations over there and then responding to comments that really piqued my interest and jumping off points for other conversations around the best man and other series over there. So be sure to subscribe. And if you're new and you just came across my video with or came across my channel with this video, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button in advance because I think you're going to love it here for real. You just are. I'll wait. Mm -hmm. That like button too. Thank you so much, sweetie. I appreciate it. Now, without further ado, let's talk about this hot mess of a damn episode titled It All Falls Apart. <sighs> Between Shelby and Quentin having their very first marital spat, seemingly with him like, I just want to die. And her thinking that he wants to break up with her inadvertently because she is completely traumatized from his heart attack even though it was a minor heart attack and she wants to do any and everything that she can to preserve his life meanwhile he's deciding that he don't want to go out like that uh watching his calories not smoking his cigars not drinking his whiskey if he gonna go out he want to go out as the man that he knows himself to be doing the things that he wants to do okay cool 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 have a conversation Shelby got your back this girl love you regardless like at the end of the day that's one thing that we know two things for show shelby loves quentin and just that whole scene of watching them have that fight after we got all of this marital bliss the last like five episodes i'm like uh-uh we don't do this this is giving all types of ghetto baby uh-uh we're in the hood now baby y'all are the stable couple y'all are the healthy couple y'all have become the quintessential couple that we come for resetting while everybody else is running amok while merch and candace are hiding shit from each other in their personal lives we come to shelby and quentin because they got it together and they pretty much functioning normally while Robin is being unfulfilled and Harper is running off doing whatever the hell Harper wants to do which we find out in this episode also involves kissing Jordan on premiere nights maybe a little bit more than that we don't know we still got Quentin and Shelby to fall back on with true love great sex amazing food trying to support their little entitled ass daughter mm -hmm. being a refuge to LJ because Lance is running amok and completely ridiculous so what y'all not going to do is take the one couple the stable couple the healthiest couple of the whole damn bunch and try to tear them asunder okay we will not stand for it Mr. Malcolm Lee I'm sorry bring them back and bring them back immediately because the one couple that's going to make it out of this series unscathed or need to be it is damn Quentin and Shelby they've earned it we've earned it don't play even though by the end of the episode, y'all, I really believe that they're going to figure it out. Shelby takes time and she's talking to Jordan about how scared she is and um, Quentin's response. And then Quentin shares with the, with the boys about how he ain't going out like that, yada, yada, yada. So once they have these conversations with each other, they're going to be back on the same accord and figure out what's the game plan moving forward. Shelby, rightfully so, is concerned and Quentin needs to re respect that damn concern. Ain't nobody ever loved him as much as Shelby loved him. Period. Sir, get it together. Now, I'm going to loop around and bring it around town for Mr. Harper Stewart, who I think don't deserve good things after what we saw play, play out in this episode. Mm-hmm. Because just when I was off y'all's asses, just when I was like, you know what? I could actually see it for Robin and Harper. But again, I'm going to do him last. So let me keep it moving child the students at merch and candace's school found a video of merch doing his mma stuff and that is the the seed 
to the bigger bloom that happens and ultimately Candace finds out in this episode that he is fighting as well as the boys and everybody shows up to support him in this match thank god because by golly miss molly you keeping a secret and then Candace holding on to the fact that she was sexually assaulted by the professor but that was both like y'all's little secrets was ruining y'all's marriage and y'all could literally talk to each other you tell each other pretty much everything and i really didn't understand why we was holding this stuff from each other merch you had your little spaz out on quentin cool you felt disrespected by unfinished business how was position and also how your friends have referred to you over years of time you out here whipping ass in mma and yet you go on weeks without even communicating this to them even after the film premiered sir what the hell are you waiting for besides your eye and lip to be bust again i don't know candace you had your breakdown your moment where you saw him laying on the couch all busted up you asked no damn questions which was weird and you needed a moment so okay cool but then girl you steady move forward with your dissertation and having to go to defend it and then you still don't tell him anything why why does it take you having to find out about his mma uh <laughs> minor league ambitions i don't even know what to call it y'all um and popping up and supporting him for y'all to now finally bear all <sighs> whatever they do it they get back to a, a much better place so okay cool this is the second couple that's in a, a very good healthy place i'm hoping that candace is able to really heal through what dr temple did to her um i'll probably talk about this in a separate video but it's interesting to me um when it happened it was so traumatic to watch and it was also very small so it wasn't a full-on r i'm not gonna say the word because i don't want to be blocked or get flagged but y'all know what i mean it wasn't a full-on r but it was an unwanted non-consent groping and in watching how regina hall delivered the performance i thought that she did a really great job of showing the aftermath of that and just how traumatizing it is because some people will look at it like oh it wasn't that big of a deal he just touched you and you stopped him and then you were able to get away but like that kind of stuff sticks with you and it makes you feel unsafe it makes you feel dirty it just makes you feel all of these things and while I'm like, girl, why didn't you tell Merch? I also really do understand that that is the stigma that comes with an incident like that. And I'm really grateful for all the creators behind The Best Man deciding to tell this story, this particular uh, circumstance within a black woman's experience, because I think that this is one of the things that we are asked to be strong through and to kind of like push through and pretend like it doesn't affect us. Meanwhile, our uh, non-black counterparts are allowed to fall apart, are allowed to feel all they feel and all of that. So I just thought it was really not a dope thing to see in reference to the trauma of a sexual assault, even at this caliber, but the authenticity to the delivery and the time spent on this particular conversation within the story. And I just felt like it was very true to form. It took me back to a moment that I had and it was just like, Ugh, I hate this for us. But again, this felt very true to life and I'm appreciative of it. Hopefully it is something that allows people to <sighs> see us differently, but then also feel more compelled to protect us when and if they're able. Anywho, moving on. Robin gets the opportunity to study in Ghana under uh, some kind of chef initiative and this is something that she has been wanting for quite a while and the plan is for the whole family to go for the summer. However, Harper is on this roller coaster ride of success and criticism, um, bashing, but then also acclaim with the film. It comes out initially to negative reviews, but then there is some critical acclaim and then they're also talking about a sequel and he is literally chasing this whole thing and completely falling back into his habits he had before they started couples therapy and had their breakthrough the episode prior so everything that happened kind of went out the window because he's back to really focusing on him and doing him and forgetting how to show up for her and part of the reason why I feel like he's forgetting how to show up for Robin is because he's also spending a lot more time with Jordan <sighs> these two stress me out so damn much but anyway I have been saying this this whole time that Robin deserves better. I really, really feel bad for her. And the reason why, I'm not even saying that Harper don't deserve good things because he basically cheated on her and kissed Jordan. 
Nico, you wrote about it. You wrote about basically what it was going to be like. And maybe this is for the sequel. And I don't give a good goddamn because you shouldn't have left it out if that's the case. But you wrote about what it was like or what it would be like for Jackson and Kendall to pick up where they left off and pick up on that mischance and all of that kind of stuff. And then you leave it around for her to see it as if that doesn't matter. Like this woman has been more than gracious to you. She has been more than forgiven. She has been more than understanding, especially with you and this Jordan bullshit. And yet and still in y'all's forties, you are still keeping up this crap. And she has been with you now for decades, riding this raggedy ass Harper stool rod boosting up your ego when you are insecure and feeling down giving you advice and there to lean on meanwhile you can she can't lean on you for goddamn squat you move her to the upper east upper west side when she really wants to stay in harlem and serve her community you run around here trying to find more purpose and more uh trying to be more serious and more respected meanwhile you running from the same community that you're trying to be respected by sir go to hell harper stewart go straight to hell because like i have said previously robin deserves better in all honesty you deserve better than what the hell you are giving the world you are giving yourself why if you wanted to be with jordan why in the hell not just be with jordan <sighs> this is exhausting at this point it was cute the first movie and it was like okay they're young and they're still trying to figure it out he didn't wrote this cool second movie that's when it became tired when we got into these the to this limited series i was like ah oh, i'm trying to see i'm trying to see but he seems very genuine and loyal but then also something ain't clicking when it come to him and robin but i i'm not here for it robin run for the hill sis but also harper you and jordan's ship have sailed and i'm saying this all before watching the season finale y'all i can only imagine what this damn season finale this series finale because it's a limited series streaming right now on peacock I can only imagine what this thing has in store for us. And before I jump back into my rants, have you subscribed? Have you liked the video? Because you're still listening, you're still watching, so I think that you liked it. Go ahead, hit that like button for me, please, boo. Mm -hmm. Now back to Raggedy Ass Harper. This episode was riddled with flashbacks and then jumps back to the, to the present revealing different elements of what happened the premiere night the same night that harper i mean the same night that q has his heart attack and we learn more and more and more about the time that jordan and harper spent alone up until they actually have a kiss and start to get a little bit much more cozy now i don't know if i stopped paying attention or what i did maybe i went to go get a uh, sparkling water or something but I remember watching up until like he started unzipping her hoodie and they are about to get it on and then that phone call happens and I think that this might be the call about Q but I don't really know but then also because of how they did it and how everything is so disjointed they could pop up and then show us that something went a little bit further what I do know for sure is that they actually kissed because they have this whole little moment after revealing a little rubber band balls or whatever from the pet <sighs> like why do you even have that jordan girl like what exactly are we doing what exactly are we doing low-key jordan deserves better than to be this 20 year old like save for later as tv dinner like girl and then she might be pregnant jordan is probably definitely pregnant when she started having these blind spells and the headaches i was like this is not some regular type of stuff something is actually going on with her but the first thing i thought when the doctor said that she could be pregnant is by who and i'm guessing demetrius but demetrius don't want no kids and if you didn't sleep with harper because y'all only kiss then also by who who else was she smashing malcolm <laughs> because this that part is stressing me out do i think that uh jordan should have a kid yes because i think that she would need a child to help ground her she does have her godchildren however with lance acting a monkey ass food the way that he's been acting as of late and we're gonna get into his little raggedy behind as well from this episode but it just brings home the fact that those are not her actual kids and i think that she would do well as a mom and also this would be something that will help draw her back into the home versus being so focused on climbing this damn corporate ladder that she's already climbed mastered and then let people like 20 times over like girl what else is there to do honey what else is there to do just allow people to love you and build out your family because at this point girl i don't know lance 
Lancelot Sullivan, you should be ashamed of your damn self. Packing up LJ's clothes, cutting off their credit cards, and doubling down in the damn disrespect. All because you feel like this is a phase. You feel like this is something that will change. If this is a dead, okay. So like, this is what I don't get about the parents who do this shit. You feel like this is a phase. Meanwhile, you won't go with it. If it's a phase and they're going to they gonna go ahead and cycle through it, then why don't you ride the wave with them versus fighting it? If this is just something that's going to happen for a short period of time, then why not be in the moment with them? Why not help them navigate this? Why not just accept it if this is what you really believe? It's because you're not really having a real conversation with yourself and you know good and God dang on well, it is not a phase. And by now you should also know that this is not something that you can one chastise punish or beat out of your child this is 2022 lance sullivan get your sh together sir because at this point we have far past the amount of grace period that you should be allowed in not having no experience with anybody within the queer community not understanding non-binary and just basic lack of information at this point we are we have moved into the time period of this being months now and you have just re you're literally just rejecting your child shame on you shame it's truly disgusting to watch you want to get rid of the credit cards so that they have to come to you to buy clothes because you don't like the clothes that they buy in what would you do what would you do if it was running, what would you do if they was running around here naked because that's what I would do. I the, the pushback that we see LJ give Lance is long overdue in this episode. And I'm so surprised that it took this long for them to get to this point that they actually run away. And now we can't even find them. Now we don't know if something happens to them. And it's all your damn fault, Lance. Yes, I said it. All your fault. Because your child is led to believe, rightfully so, by your actions and your words that you would much rather them not actually exist, not actually be there, than to show up and be who they actually are. Because you refuse to accept them. Just think about that for a second, Lance. Asinine, exactly. Get it together. Between you and Harper, like, it's too much. It's too much. I have picked a struggle and it's not neither one of you Negroes. It's trying to it's trying to figure out how you know Q don't get back on that little blue pill with the Viagra. That's all. That's what my struggle was gonna be. That's what my struggle was gonna be. My struggle was gonna be merch still struggling to tell y'all to kiss his ass because between Lance and and Harper, <laughs> the egotistical massage noir, the gaslighting that happens with these two fine black men, it just grinds my damn gears, y'all grinds my gears i'm not even gonna watch this finale episode i'm gonna take my ass to bed after recording this video because these black men have me that stressed i think that's pretty much it let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below because i can't wait to hear what you felt what you're thinking after watching this episode oh shout out to dimitri another little raggedy black man well he not raggedy i mean his little support in like funding private prisons is definitely questionable. Jordan is 100% right for confronting him in this episode about how basically he's directly connected to disempowering black people because you are and is. Um, him trying to stand 10 toes down and still be there for her and all that was kind of cute. But then also, sir, like... I don't, I don't know. I don't like how it sounds that you're taking the money that you make off these prisons and then reinvesting in these communities that still run and socialize so that you can still fuel these prisons. It's given a toxic cycle and you need to find a new business if you want to be with me. I don't think that that's too much to ask. You should have made plenty of money now and invested well. Because if you want to ride this ride again, it's given no jailhouse rock, baby. Okay, it is four o'clock in the morning when I'm recording this and clearly I'm goofy. <sighs> Thank y'all so much for listening. And again, drop down in the comment section and let me know what you think so that we can keep the conversation going. I'm gonna see y'all in the finale video and I know it's gonna be a, a hot ass mess, but a well-written, beautifully shot one. So here's to that. See you in the next video.